Hey guys, how you doing? I recorded a video earlier and I wasn't aware until I tried to upload it that you can't uh, upload unless you go live stream anything over 27 minutes. This video I did was 27 minutes long and it was on 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. So, I'm going to redo it here and just shorten it up and just do verses 1 and 2. Um, and also, in the future, the tone and tenor of my lessons may change significantly because I think there's some things that need to be addressed, like some of these, uh, these uh, new knowledge, uh, new movements that are out there that just, in the last two, three, four, five years that just accelerated onto the scene and a lot of people that are still new and are on the milk of the word, it sounds so good that they're believing it. So, might touch on some of those things, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the lesson. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 2. This know also that in the last days perilous sh times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. In the last day perilous times shall come. Yes, indeed. Everybody's going to have their own tribulations, their own problems. Every country is going to have their own problems. There are going to be perilous times, especially in the walk of the Christian. For the unbeliever, things may look at a distance just fine. Everything's hunky-dory, right? But for the Christian, we're going to be tested. No, no, not tempted, but tested. We will be tested. Our faith will be tested. Just as you test the impurities and the pure in gold. We can be refined. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh, yeah, there is the liberal movement out there. Is vehemently trying to get everybody to love themselves. Love yourself. We don't need to love ourselves. It's natural to love ourselves. Didn't Christ say... Love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You love yourself already. So love your neighbor, your paper boy, your uh, grocery clerk, your co-worker. Love them as you love yourself. You see? Another uh, character trait of lovers of self. Well, raising, raising others, raising others up for praise in return. Uh, you might just to be in somebody's good graces, just overly compliment them. Go out of your uh, out of your way to say things extraordinary to lift them up to make them feel good about themselves, but really you can care care less about them. But knowing that this person that you're raising up will uh, go around and talk nice about you in return, that's lovers of themselves. You like to hear compliments about yourself. And uh, let's take somebody, for instance, uh, uh, an alumni at a big university, gives money to the, to the boosters, gives a big large sum every year, knowing that in return, in the monthly newsletter, it's gonna his name's gonna be stated in there, how much money he gave. He sees his name in there. He loves himself so much that he's seeing his name. People are talking about this guy, giving big, big, big money. Lovers of yourself. Uh covetousness. Well, love of money's covetousness. Um and the sin of covetousness is quite expensive. It is. Uh the characteristics of Someone that's covetousness is, well, look around at the treasures they lay up on earth. Do they drive a big uh, $70,000 truck? 
Or do they drive something that'll get them to point A to point B that serves the purpose? Or do they have $10,000 lift kit and uh, uh, $8,000 stereo in that truck that you can hear seven blocks away? That's not needed. That's covetousness. That, I mean, is that really needed? That's a treasure on earth is what that is. And uh, given to others for, again, praise. Let's say Johnny's behind on his uh, power bill and I give him... Uh, couple hundred dollars to pay that power bill knowing that in return Johnny's gonna go around and say oh man Daniel gave me two hundred dollars to pay my power bill but really I'm giving that money so I can be praised I love myself I want to hear myself be praised right that's a, a scenario of uh, covetousness uh, boasters <laughs> boasters aren't too hard to find they walk around like a peacock a boaster would be somebody like, let's say, huh, he boasts about hunting. Let's say 24-7, 365 days a year, seven days a week. Everything he wears is camouflage, lives in camouflage. He's a boaster. You know, he uh, he's not dropping 400-pound uh, elk by any stretch of the means, but he boasts that he hunts. Everything he's got is hunt, hunt, hunt. And none of it gives glory to God. None of it. Not a thing of it. Or take somebody that likes to boast that they're rich. They want people to think they're rich. And uh, everything they wear, they look like a uh, American Eagle mannequin, preppy, trying to look like the upper class. But really, he's behind on his bills all the time and uh, scrapes a living to get by. But he's boasting that he's got money. He wants people to think that he's got money. Or she. It could be anybody. Uh, proud. Well, characteristics of somebody that's proud is, uh, well, they walk around like a peacock too. Head, head held up real high. Walk by you without saying a hello. Um, uh, they're proud. They're just proud. It's, a, uh, you can, it's not too hard to find somebody that's proud. Uh, get in a conversation with two, three folks and, uh, watch the one that butts in all the time proud blasphemer well that ain't too hard anybody that says god damn in their speech that's irreverent that's irreverent anybody with a mouth god damn that's irreverent pet peeve of mine and jesus christ let's say you're outside you're looking at a lightning storm and a bolt hits pretty close to where you're standing jesus christ blasphemous blasphemer Disobedient to parents. I've said this before many videos a while back. Disobedient to parents. I have seen kids when my daughter cheerleaded for the football team in high school. I'd see in the parking lot kids out changing their clothes. Men, boys and girls, getting out of the car modest, then going in and getting in another car and changing their clothes and putting on hooker outfits and stuff, running around these uh, football games, dressed slutty and stuff. They're just disobedient to parents. They had home training. They were brought up. That's disobedient to parents right there is one example of that. And I know there's a lot of fatherless homes. Uh, father's not there to keep that boy in check and uh, keep that girl into what a model of a man is, you know. But a lot of these kids have home training. That's the thing of it. They've got home training. And some of them, you'll go into a grocery store, or even the library, and hear these cat kids spout off at their parents like they're in an argument with one of their friends. They just sit there and take it. Well, there's a shirt collar on there for a reason, and that's, you know, unthankful. Unthankful. There's a lot of that going around today. Walk into the grocery store and hold the door for somebody. And see if you don't get a thank you. Bet you won't. Nine times out of ten, you won't. They're either too busy worried about themselves, or they got that cell phone, face all in that cell phone, unthankful. Or let somebody over in traffic. They'll look at you like that with their phone. Won't even uh, won't even put it down for one second to give you a little wave. Thank you, bud. Unthankful. Unholy. Well, that's just against God, period. They're a conversation. What do they talk about? What do they talk about? They talk about God. They talk about Christ. They talk about repentance. I love talking about Christ and repentance, but it's hard to find somebody that'll talk about that with you. You either think you're weird or crazy. 
and uh, unholy their uh, conversation will show it as well as their life. How are they living their life? Are they living it holy or unholy? We can tell a lot by somebody. I know they say don't judge a book by its cover. We can tell a lot by somebody by the way they live their life in their conversation and their speech. We can. Okay, I don't want to run over time again. Uh, the next lesson it'll be in Second uh, Timothy chapter 3. We'll go through verses 3 and 4. But anyway, till next time.